welcome to the Garden of Favor podcast, where we are committed to cultivating lives and businesses God's way. Because when we do, we see the evidence of his favor. I'm warning you now, be prepared. You might cry a little bit and you might be tempted to shout a couple yeses and amens as we ask ourselves the tough questions and get honest with God about what he wants to do in us and through us for the kingdom. Hey, sister friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned six-figure corporate exec, Turn top 1% network marketer, turn dream job, live in my best life as a mindset strategist and kingdom blueprints coach for Christian entrepreneurs. I believe your life is like a garden and your business plays a major role in fulfilling your purpose and calling. Are you ready to get your mindset and heart set in sync with the father so you can bloom into all he's created you to be? Then let's grow girl. Hey, sister friend, welcome. So glad you're here. And today I am exposing all of my heart because it's something that a lot of my clients have been bringing to me, a lot of conversations I've been having with other entrepreneurial friends, and it's a conversation I've been having with the Lord. And so before we get into that, I'm going to invite you at the end as well, but I want to make sure you hear this because I know not everybody listens to the end. Uh, And so I want to make sure that you know that you were invited to something I've been talking about for a little while, but didn't feel like the Lord was releasing me to do it. He does that to me sometimes. Gives me these awesome ideas. I'm a visionary. Anyone else a visionary? I'm a visionary. He gave me this phrase. I I don't even know if it was last year or in the very beginning of 2021, business tree boot camp and I was like oh that sounds like fun I would love to do that with my ladies and so I finally am at the point where I am inviting you officially to a five-day free event that I am hosting and I'm referring to it as the business tree boot camp it is five days of boot camp to get you in shape to run this race that the Lord has called you to has created you to And I'll talk a little bit more about that today on today's podcast because it's really what we're talking about. But just to give you a couple little exciting things about what it's going to be about. Well, number one is explaining what is a business tree. Quickly, it is a business that has a ministry focus. Hint, if you are a believer, if you are a child of God, you are told to go and tell and be a disciple. And one of the ways you get to do that is through your business. Hence, you have a business tree. Number two, we're going to talk about setting goals with God. There is something about an ambitious Christian woman who at times feels guilty for making goals and thinking, am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for God? Is my heart? I think really the question is, is my heart right, right? And you guys know I love talking about mindset, but I can't talk about mindset if I don't talk about heart set. So we'll be talking about mindset specifically with money and a few other things as well as heart set and making sure that we are operating from a place of our identity as children of the king. And then the last day, I'm going to talk about how you can experience the favor of God and flow in his favor as a business tree warrior for the kingdom. So if you want to join in on that five day free boot camp, you can grab the link in the show notes and or in our Facebook community so that you can have access to the five days and there's workbooks, all good all, all, all good stuff that comes with it. I'm super excited. I cannot wait. I have been brainstorming about this thing for like the last year and uh, I'm finally able to deliver it with you guys. So all that saying, I hope you're excited. And I know you're here because you love Jesus and I know you're here because you have a business and or you want to have some sort of, you have this dream on your heart, this entrepreneurial thing that maybe looks a little different than the typical nine to five. And you are desiring to make sure that you are continuing to do that in alignment with the Lord. And chances are the last year and a half, you have been pausing on your dreams and goals and and really questioning What's the point? So I don't know how you were raised in church. Uh, I was actually raised Baptist. We uh, were taught pre-trib rapture. If those terms are unfamiliar to you, don't worry about it. If they're familiar, then you know what I'm talking about. We can talk about that another day. But in 2020, I really started to, instead of just taking what I was told, I started to research myself what what actually is going on here? It feels like, and a lot of people are talking about the the mark of the beast and the the end times and the antichrist and 
oh, we're in the last days, we're in the last days. Well, let me just ease your heart a little bit. Friend, we have been in the last days ever since Jesus went back to heaven. Okay, so we have been in the last days for thousands of years. It's not like we are, um, you know, in the last days just in 2020, okay? So we have been in the last days. And depending on whether you're a futurist, you're a preterist, you're a partial preterist, again, those terms might mean nothing to you. They meant nothing to me until a couple years ago when I started asking the Lord questions. And I wasn't satisfied with what I had been told. I wanted to not just believe something in my mind. I wanted to live from a place in my heart that I felt like the Lord gave me personally peace about the climate and what was going on. And I'd be lying if I didn't say that there have been times that I, I want to just run for the hills, grab my babies and, you know, consider, call me crazy. I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Um, I definitely like to uh, be open-minded. Um, however, there have been times I've wanted to just run for the hills and hide my babies and say, what is the point? What is the point of whether that means, you know, having nice clothes and getting ready for the day or going, like building a business and making money so I can not only feed my kids and go on vacation, but then help other people, you know, all kinds of reasons to have a job, to expand God's kingdom, all the things. And so I began to ask the Lord, what's the point? And I've asked him this a few times. And over the last year and a half, he has uh, really not necessarily answered that question, but he has answered it, answered that question with a question. And so, so much so that I felt at peace about what he had showed me in my quiet time with him about uh, the end times and the study of eschatology and what I have come to uh, find peace in. And uh, you probably have questions about that. Some of you probably do. I'm happy to have conversations about this in, in more detail. I'm not a theologian. Um, I do know that I settled for service in my Christian life for most of my life without having a true relationship with the Lord. It was kind of like I knew him, like he was this like popular uh, person or, you know, it was like I, I, I saw, I read things about him and saw him online like this celebrity, but I didn't necessarily, he wasn't calling me to have coffee. And really in reality, I wasn't calling him to have coffee uh, because God is always waiting for us. He says, draw near to me and I will, I will, I will draw near to you. And so all of that to say is that I have a personal relationship with the Lord now, so much more than this idea of who he is, but I truly have had personal, intimate experiences and encounters and conversations and just different things that I know that I know that I know that I know that he sees me and that he loves me and that I am valued, I am loved, I am safe in his arms. And I believe that for you today too. The enemy doesn't want us to know that and or to believe that or to think that. And I know that this climate that we're in right now is such a spiritual warfare. There is such a thick and tangible spiritual battle going on right now. And if you don't feel that and you don't know that, uh, then I hope this encourages you to know that and remind you that we are not fighting with flesh and blood. We are in a war in a spiritual realm with this powers, the darkness, the principalities, the rulers of the darkness, right? The enemy and his dark kingdom, the kingdom of lies, the kingdom of fear, the kingdom of doubt in who God is and what God has already spoken over you and to me. And I am no different than you in that the enemy is after me so that I don't know who I am and I don't know and I doubt who God is and that I have a distortion of him and who I am so that I feel weak and, and, and not empowered, but powerless. I don't know, but if I look in scripture, it says that God, you know, Holy Spirit gives us a love, a power and a sound mind. And if I'm being completely honest over the last year and a half, my world has been rocked just like yours probably. And maybe some in different ways and shapes and forms, but it's really allowed me to start asking God the hard questions and not being ashamed of my doubts or uh, fears or questions. 
I love that story about the man that says, you know, help my unbelief. Like if, if I have any unbelief, Lord, help me. And so I'm asking for God for forgiveness. Like, Lord, forgive me for not believing that you are who you say that you are and that you are good. This is a whole other episode, but then my question is, well, God, is my definition of good your definition of good? I don't know. I've had that conversation with a few friends lately. You know, it's not really that I don't believe that God is good uh, because I, I do know that he is love and he is good and, and I will stand on what the word of God says about who he is. The question is, is my understanding and my the way that I wrap my head around good and love and kind and just and all these things the same as God's definition of it? So today's episode, really, that was a long kind of intro, Um, but I just want you to know that the enemy is after all of us so that we don't know who we are and whose we are. Our wealth and our value and our worthiness is in whose we are, not what we have. And so if we don't know who we are and whose we are, we will feel worthless and powerless so I asked God this question again I felt like for a while I was okay and then everything with um, Afghanistan happened and I, I can't help but think about the men and the women and the babies that are terrified for their life and you know I shared with a friend I said my kids are mad today because I, you know, there was one day it was, I I gave my kids square peanut butter and jelly sandwich instead of a heart shaped. And on one hand, I'm so blessed that that is their, that's what upset them for for the day, for the afternoon, right? I mean, I'd have, my toddler had like a total tantrum because of this. And yet there are other babies that are looking into their parents' eyes, terrified of what's going on. And it makes me really question, what's the point? What's the point of all this? What's the point of, you know, getting ready in the morning and taking new brand photos and setting goals for my business so that I can grow it and sharing with people that I can help them with their mindset and, you know, let them know that God loves you and he wants you to live in flow with him, um, fearlessly living out the word and, you know, my whole, my flow program, which I can't wait to share with you guys that I'm currently doing with a, a mastermind now. And so I I had that honest conversation with God and I just said, when I look at all of this chaos and all of this pain and all of these people, I did not plan to cry, um, who desperately need Jesus. What's the point of my goals and my dreams? I'm not a pretty crier, so I'm glad you can't see me. Um, what's the point? And really as quickly, and I, I can, you know, I could keep going on about what's the point. And, you know, I feel like my kids, um, the Lord has been showing me over the last really couple years is that my children are my first ministry. Speaking of a business tree, right? That my children are my first ministry. And of all the people on this earth that I want to live in eternity with, you know, my children are absolutely my number one and they are my responsibility and i want to train up a child in the way he should go that's when he is old he does not depart from it and um you know the lord has really challenged me as a very goal-driven ambitious entrepreneurial woman who really the lord has showed me that i have tried to prove my worth through my business yeah i can tell you all the good things building five six seven eight figure businesses yeah i have i've done all that by the by the grace of god But so much of that I've realized was out of trying to prove my worthiness. It wasn't necessarily out of, out of answering the call that the Lord has put on my life. That's a heart set issue, right? That's a heart set thing. And so anyways, I just point blank said, God, what is the point? And if you've talked with me before, I've, I've said that before, like, well, God told me I've never audibly heard the voice of God, but in my spirit, I have. And the Lord answered me very quickly when I asked him this time, what's the point? And like I said, in previous times, it was more of he asked me the question, he answered my question with a question, which then took took me down these rabbit holes of really digging into God's word and studying eschatology and studying all these things that I've been told my whole life and that I wasn't quite sure, you know, is this just something I think in my head or do I actually believe that and live that out from my heart? And so this time he point blank answered my question. 
and it was four words. I am the point. I am the point. And it caught me off guard because I thought, wow, it really goes back to everything that I have said about business and what the Lord has taught me over the last seven years of being goal-driven, ambitious, and standing on stages and receiving awards and being able to, again, brag about all the awesome things that God has done with me. But really deep in my heart, I've always known that the Lord has called me to this space so that I can love other people and share Jesus with other people. And I think specifically a lot of my calling has to do with showing women who have settled for a surface relationship with the Lord that he actually wants to be your best friend and have an intimate relationship with you and be your father and be your daily teacher and your guide. Thinking of God the Father, you know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I settled for surface my whole life until I came into a season of desperation and Thank the Lord I ran into the arms of Jesus instead of running to other things to heal my pain and my trauma. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm called to business for the sake of the kingdom. If I can impact a mother and teach her how to read God's word and teach her how to talk to the Lord and that, that, that he loves her and he is her father. And then she in turn starts to treat her children differently and maybe you know to start teaching them about who God is. That's a ripple effect. And maybe it's a, a one little thing that I've said about business but that it plants a seed. Maybe it's a post or a picture or you know and again this isn't just about business our entire life is a billboard for Jesus the way that we respond to the barista at Starbucks matters because we might be the only encounter of of Jesus that they experience for the day the way that we talk to the customer service rep on that call that is driving us crazy and that we're angry and irate about matters because we might be the only person that they encounter. So I don't want you to think that your business and your life and your bumper sticker on your car has to have, you know, John 316 and you have to be tattooed with a verse or wear this t-shirt that says Jesus loves you. Are those things okay? Absolutely. And I, I like love, love me a good Jesus hat or a Jesus t-shirt or something. In fact, I had a apparel business. Um, And I'm waiting on the Lord to let me bring that back in some capacity. I've got some ideas, but living on a prayer apparel. But it's not what I mean. I mean that our actions, if you think about Jesus and you look at how he walked on the earth and and what he did, he didn't walk around with, you know, like these signs. And he told, he talked to people. He built relationships with people. He did life with people. He was the living, breathing testimony of discipleship. And I don't know about you, but I see that in Matthew 28, 19, it tells us to go and tell, to be a disciple. So I want to walk you through some scriptures that the Lord has put on my heart, that he has given me confidence to know that I am right where he wants me. And that when I want to throw in the towel sometimes and run for the hills and, you know, start food prepping and get a bunker and prepare for the worst, right? Because if you are looking toward the future and, and let me just encourage you to, I've made this post a couple times on my stories and on social media. A lot of Christians are so fixated and focused on the mark of the beast that we forget and or don't know that in Revelations, it equally talks about the mark of God. I want the mark of God. Do you? And the Bible also tells us to fixate and focus on, think of good things, holy things, righteous things, pure things. And while I don't want to be ignorant to what's going on and and the darkness that is surrounding us, right? God doesn't want us focused on that. In fact, so much so that those things can become an idol. For me, what the Lord showed me in 2020 was that I was obsessing over knowing 
that I was obsessing over knowing that I know that I know that I know information. And what the Lord brought me to by answering questions with a question and, and continuing to take me on this journey and this treasure hunt of who is God? Wait a second. Can I actually trust him? Are his plans for me good? And is my definition of good his definition of good? Does he really want to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a hope and a future? Do I even know what that means? It sounds sexy. It sounds good. I have a plaster, you know, on my, on my wall or on my Instagram or whatever. But do I really believe that? And so if you're wrestling with some of these things, I want you to know, and I'm sharing from my heart, that God is not intimidated by your questions. He's not mad at you because you're asking them these hard questions. He wants to take you into a deeper understanding of who he is to show you how much he loves you. So what is the point? The whole point of your business, which includes your life, which includes your home, it includes your neighborhood, it includes everything everything that you do. But in the context of being an entrepreneur, we're going to talk about this right now. The point of your business is God, is Jesus, is the gospel. It's to be able to be the salt of the earth and the light on a hill that cannot be hidden. So Philippians 1.6, someone needs to hear this today. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The New Living Translation is, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So first of all, I want to ask you this, and this is my coach side, coach side coming out of the heart set. So I am a heart set and mindset coach. And I love to work with the mind and, and bring in the neuroscience, brain science to teach you how your brain works. And it's all the things that God already said in scripture. We just don't always quite get it. And so I like to tie that to science and show you like this is literally how your brain is working. However, we cannot negate the reality and the truth that God looks at the heart. He tells us that. Don't look at the outward appearance. You can look like you have all of your stuff together. But I look at the heart and I actually know what's in there, which is why he also says you know, make sure that you write these things on your heart, write the truths of God on your heart, because whatever is in the heart, it comes out. It's not necessarily what you ingest. It's what you are. It's what your heart and what comes out of your mouth and the things that come out of our mouth in the, the hard times are really what are stored up in our hearts. And this, this goes for me too, right? I am, I, the Lord is teaching me this in my own life. The Philippians 1, 6 I want to encourage you that it says, be confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day that Jesus returns. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm here and I know for sure that I'm going to heaven. So whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, or no rapture, not to like throw you for a loop here, but rapture was not something that has been since the beginning of time. It's a relatively new theology. Um, all that to say, which I can talk about the Greek and all of that and the word there that, you know, they associate with it. But whatever it is, the Lord has given me peace to surrender the need to know. And giving me peace in that I know that he is good and his plans are good. And even though they don't always make sense to me, that I can, I can rest in his promises that they are good. And that my home is not here. It's in heaven. So Philippians 1.6, if you are still here, God has a work that he wants to do in you. And he has a work that he wants to do through you. But oftentimes we want him to do the work through us without doing the work in us. And so perhaps you're in an in season where he is stirring up what is in your heart and what is in your mind and making sure, hey, is that pure? He's refining you, the refiner's fire. So that in this next season of life, what comes out of you is from a pure place, a holy, righteous, sanctified heart. And the sanctification process is daily, right? Because we're sinners in need of a savior. We're poor in spirit. But I want to encourage you if you've been asking the Lord, what is the point of all of this when there's so much darkness, there's so much pain, there's so much sadness. Jesus is the point. Right? The antidote to fear and grief and sadness and depression and anxiety and all the things that we're seeing in this world, the, print, the, the devil is the prince of the air. So that's just looming around everywhere. But the antidote to that is Jesus because he's the hope of the world. Your business is a ministry. And again, I want to invite you to Business Street Boot Camp. 
You can sign up through the link in the show notes. Another verse I want to share with you is Colossians 1, 9 through 12. I'm going to read the NIV translation. It says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. I encourage you, pray for your sisters and brothers who are... Uh, we, everyone's, we're, our hearts are breaking for what breaks the heart of the Father, and that's okay. I, I don't, I'm not saying to ignore what's going on. We need to pray into it. Prayer is a powerful tool. It is our main tool. It is our main weapon. And so he says, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Colossians 1, 9 through 12. bearing fruit there's many different types of fruit and one of those is other believers because matthew 28 19 very clear it tells us go therefore and make disciples of all the nations help the people to learn of me believe in me and obey my words baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit go and tell if you run to the hills like maybe you have considered, I have considered, right? You're going and hiding. You're not going and telling. And Jesus is very clear in Matthew when he says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Your business, your business tree is a beautiful, authentic way to go and make disciples. Again, whether you're, you label yourself as a Christian photographer or not, you still encounter people and react with people and connect with people just like Jesus talked with all kinds of people. It's an opportunity for you to be the light, which is another verse, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Sister, some of us have lost our salt and the Lord wants us to be salty. Have you ever ate a dish that didn't have, that desperately needed salt and you couldn't find salt? It's so bland, it's so blah. Life without Jesus is bland. Life without Jesus is blah. Life without Jesus is depressing. And while at times it might feel good, it's only temporary, right? I've lived that life. We are meant to be the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Your business matters. If it is, in fact, the business that God has called you to. And that's a whole other episode. And if you are questioning that, I encourage you to, to invest in Bloom Academy. That's what that's for. After I lost my eight-figure business and I cried out to the Lord on the streets, walking my you know town every day, just really seeking peace and comfort. And what's the next step now? How am I going to come back from this, right? I cried out, God, what do you want me to do? I don't want to settle for anything else. I only want to do what you want me to do. And he answered that through a series of questions and things. And that's exactly what I help women walk through in Bloom Academy. It's a DIY course. You can do it on your own, but it is a deep, deep, deep course with you and the father to get to the root of what he's calling you to do so that you can be a light. If your business, if you know that you know that you know that you're doing what God has created you to do and called you to do in this season of your life, You are meant to be put on a hill. You're a city that cannot be hidden. And if you run for the hills or you hide or you get off social media, which again, I'm not talking about boundaries. Those are healthy and sometimes we need to have boundaries in place. I personally have been off social for on Instagram for like a year because it was super toxic for me. So I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that if it's not on Facebook, if it's not on Instagram, if it's not on TikTok or wherever God has you, a podcast, or if it's not, where is it? Is it in your neighborhood? Are you going out and are you telling in your neighborhood? Is it is it in your workplace, in your day job? I don't know, but I do know that God is 
has created us to be a light. And as the world gets darker, the light gets lighter. So if we go and hide and we start to, we want to throw in the towel and say, what's the point? We are forgetting the very point of our existence. And number one, our purpose is to glorify God. We talk about that in module one of Loom Academy. It's to glorify God. But how we get to do that is our calling. And there's many ways, whether you're a mom, you're a teacher, you're a nurse, you're an entrepreneur, you are a wife, you're a sister, you're an aunt. I know there's just, there's endless ways to glorify God, whether you're doing dishes, changing diapers, I say this all the time, but that your calling is a way to be able to glorify God. So I want to, a couple of things. This is kind of a longer episode here, but I want you to know that there is a point for your existence. If you've been asking God, what is the point of me growing a business? Now, I don't want you to be insensitive to the reality of what is going on. It is okay to talk about it. It's okay to take a break from social. It's okay to not post the promotion that your company is or that you had in mind uh, because you want to be sensitive to the, the season that we're in. Please hear me on that. I'm not saying just ignore it and keep driving, you know, plowing through and just keep going for it. But what I am saying is that acknowledge your feelings. Make sure that you are praying for the things that the Lord has put on your heart. It's okay if your heart is breaking for what breaks the heart of the Father. That shows that you've got the, this, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. He, he grieves and we can grieve with him. Acknowledge those things and pray into those things. We have to put on our spiritual armor because this is a spiritual battle that we are in. And it seems like the fight of our life. And not just for us, but for our children and our future generations. And so please, the Lord honors what we do in private. We don't have, you don't have to be posting about it all the time and saying, I'm praying about this. And it's, it's okay to share that also. But God looks at your heart and honors what you're doing in, in private. And he'll honor that in public. And so the question, a little bit of this heart set side, is that is your business to glorify God? And is it to build your kingdom or God's kingdom? These are some heart check questions that you can ask yourself if, if you're really kind of questioning like, what's the point? Well, first of all, is your heart in the right place? Is your business created or are you doing it in a way that is to glorify God and to be able to disciple people and share Jesus? Again, doesn't mean you have to go live and tell you know what John 3, 16 says or whatever. It just means that your life is a reflection of Jesus. It's a billboard of Jesus. It's an opportunity for you to be the salt of the earth and the light to others in this dark, dark, dark world. So is your main goal for your business to build God's kingdom or to build your kingdom? And you can spend some time on that yourself because the Lord does want to make sure that our hearts are in the right place. Are you seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Because when you do, we know that everything else takes care of its place. So has your business become an idol? Maybe that's why you're, you're questioning that. Man, I've been focusing so much on my business that I am neglecting spending time with the Lord, praying, reading my Bible, sharing with you know my children or other people. Are you truly seeking first? And are you loving God? And are you loving your neighbor through your business? And are you loving yourself through your business? And are you storing your treasures in heaven or are you focused on the treasures here on earth? And please hear me. There is nothing wrong with nice things. I love luxury things. Listen, I always say I'm bougie on a budget. I am bougie on a budget, right? Like I have my Louis Vuitton bag, but I also have on my, you know, TJ Maxx or Marshall shirt and Amazon shorts, literally. So there's nothing wrong with nice things. Nothing in fact, God says that he wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. There's scripture that says, in fact, one of the feasts was all about celebrating the fruit, like celebrating with like, woohoo, we're throwing a party just be because of, of all the work that we've done. God doesn't want you to give away every single thing and, and, and not enjoy any of the fruits of your labor. But are we more focused on the fruit of, so that we can enjoy life or are we also recognizing that there's there's we're blessed to be a blessing 
And it's not just so that we can have our dream car or our you know, dream handbag or our dream house or whatever. And again, those things are not wrong. Many people in the Bible had a lot of money. And, and well, hello, David, a man after God's own heart. He was very imperfect, did a lot of bad things. But king, he was a king. So he had money. Solomon. Nothing wrong with money, but God looks at the heart. So I encourage you to spend some time with the Lord and check your heart to make sure that you are, in fact, recognizing that your business is a business street. It is an opportunity for you to be the salt of the earth and a light on the hill in a city that cannot be hidden. But you have to choose to not be hidden and allow the Lord to use you in this season. What is the point? Jesus is the point. So I hope this encourages you. And I'm going to do it the next episode, I think, on the five ba- the, or the, the basic tactics of the enemy. He loves to use D words, and it's actually also in Bloom Academy. Um, the things that he loves, to, the weeds he loves to plant in our garden. So I'm going to do that episode because I want you to be aware of the enemy's tactics against you and this calling that the Lord has put in your life. But he who began a good work in you, be confident in this, that he will complete it before Jesus comes. So if you have an assignment from the Lord that you have not completed and that you are st- thinking, I'm going to throw in the towel, what is the point of all this? I want to encourage you that Jesus is the point to keep going, to put some more oil in your lamp and turn that baby up. Let your light shine so that others can come to know Jesus. So Father God, we thank you for these truths. We thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, the word that you gave me. What is the point? Jesus, you are the point. We are here to be a light to go and tell others of the love of Jesus and what he did for us, that he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again and he is coming back. But until he comes back, Lord, help us to be confident that you began this work in us, that we are to continue to run the race, that we are continue to to boldly and confidently and, and lovingly share your love with the world. And so, Lord, I pray over every single woman listening to this that she is empowered by your Holy Spirit, that there's just this fresh anointing over her, that she has an, an abundance of power, love, and a sound mind when all of this chaos is in, in swirling around her, Lord, that she can shut out the noise of the enemy, the prince of the air, and that she elevates herself to a kingdom perspective and a higher perspective because she is seated in heavenly places, Father. And we thank you for giving us a heavenly perspective of what is going on right now. Lord, that you want us to be the conduits to bring heaven to earth. Lord, what you say as if it is so. And so, Father, we pray that we lean into the blessings and the promises that you have already declared over us. Lord, no matter what we see in the natural, Father, I pray that we have eyes to see in the supernatural and be good stewards of the things that you have given to us. And so, Lord, I want to pray each or every woman that you bless her and her business indeed. Father, I pray that through this season, you increase her territory for the kingdom. And Lord, you are with her every single step of the way and that you keep the enemy far, far away from her as he does not want her to advance her business so that it advances your kingdom. Lord, you get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We thank you for being the reason why we're here. You are the purpose. And we glorify you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, as I mentioned, don't forget to sign up for the five-day Business Street Boot Camp where I'm going to share with you the basics of running your business with the Lord. The heart set, the mindset, money, uh, setting goals with God, all the things, having business meetings with with the Lord. Uh, I can't wait to share with you and spend some more time with you to empower you to continue to run this race the Lord has set before you. I'll see you soon.